The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine issued six new dietary guidelines for cancer prevention. No big surprises, researchers are urging people to avoid or limit alcohol, cut back on red meat, and eat more vegetables. Dr. Gordon Sachs of UC San Diego co-authored the report. He joins me now. Dr. Gordon, some people might be thinking, look, there's not anything new here. We've all known that you're supposed to not eat too much red meat, you're not supposed to drink too much alcohol, and you're not supposed to eat too much dairy. So, so what's new here? I'd say probably the most important thing is the application of something called the precautionary principle to the area of diet and cancer research. The precautionary principle is a concept that was born in other fields like toxicology and has not yet been systematically applied to diet and cancer research, although in a certain sense we already know what it, what it holds. It states that if there is a a huge amount of support that something, some dietary, some factor, some compound, some dietary factor could be toxic to us, that it's just common sense to consider limiting or avoiding its exposure. So one place that that's been applied with, uh, for many, many years has to do with uh, cigarette smoking and lung cancer. There's never been a, a randomized clinical trial, the gold standard of biomedical research for looking at whether cigarettes cause lung cancer. But we all know that they do, it's common sense. It's based on a huge amount of observational epidemiologic data, laboratory studies, and yet because it's unethical to ask somebody to, to you know, flip a coin and if they get heads they get assigned to smoke, that would be unethical. And we, because there's so much data saying that it's harmful. So we've never been able for ethical reasons to do that study. And there are logistical reasons like that why it's not possible to do the definitive study. So in the face of that, we have to make do with the data we do have. So Dr. Sachs, briefly walk me through these new guidelines. Uh, well, there are several. And um, one of them is that we should uh, avoid um, red meat uh, or limit, its ex limit our exposure to red meat and other animal foods um, which increase risk of colon cancer and possibly other cancers. Another one is to limit dairy intake because of its, in its association with an increased risk for prostate cancer. Um, a third one is that we should increase our intake of, uh, of um, vegetables and fruits and other plant foods to provide protective factors. A fourth one is that we should specifically be avoiding or, or limiting our exposure to grilled meats because of the uh, potential to form uh, mutagenic and possibly carcinogenic compounds through the grilling process of meat and poultry. Uh, and yet another one is uh, to limit or um, I'd say limit our exposure to alcohol because of its association with a number of cancers, head and neck cancers, esophageal, which is a very bad cancer to get, and breast cancer. So Dr. Sachs, I think a lot of people think that cancer is a result of bad heredity, um, stress, and pollution. Mm -hmm. How big of a, of a risk does the wrong food pose? Well, let me answer that with two pieces of evidence. First, we have known for a long time that cancer rates are substantially higher in the United States and the Western world than they are in underdeveloped nations in, in Asia and on parts of Africa. And it appears that a large part of that has to do with the diet. And yet when people migrate from those countries to the United States or to the West, their cancer rates scream upward and their children have the same rates as Caucasian Americans. So if it were something genetic, you wouldn't expect to see that dramatic overnight change in the rates. And then a second piece of evidence support for this is the work many years ago of a pair of researchers, uh, Richard Dahl and Richard Pito, who, who argued when reviewing the literature that the most important single cause or risk factor for cancer was not smoking, it was diet even more important than smoking. Very quickly, how willing are people to hear this kind of advice on food? I think many people are really thirsting for this information. People want to be able to do things to empower themselves, to reduce their risk, to make themselves healthier, and the 
the important take home message here is the importance of a whole food, plant based diet as a way to help protect ourselves. Okay, we're going to wrap it there, and we've got a full list of these new dietary guidelines on our website, kpbs.org.